So the WSA has got a few different deployment options. Uh, because it's gonna work as a web proxy, it has to get in the middle uh, between the browser and between the destination website, maybe cisco.com, uh, eBay, wherever that person may be going. So when the client connects to that web server, you or I, while we're running the WSA, we've gotta find a way to get their traffic into our proxy. And this brings us back to the two concepts from the last module, uh, which were explicit proxy mode versus transparent proxy mode. And these are pretty cool, let's take a look at them. So when we talk about transparent proxy, what we're doing is we're taking the user and we're steering them into the WSA and they don't really know anything about that happening. It's out of their control. They could look at all of their settings and options on their computer and it doesn't look like anything special is happening. However, leveraging things like policy-based routing, uh, leveraging things like WCCP, leveraging layer four through seven redirection supported on some switches and routers, we can grab individual traffic flows and say this traffic should be passed over to this other device. So it's a redirect that's happening in line by intermediate hardware. Hope that makes sense. Um, when we take a look at using like policy-based routing or web cache content, uh, it's web cache communication protocol. Um, let me double check that one. Yes, web cache, uh, web cache control protocol, sorry. Uh, the web cache control protocol versus PBR, in either scenario, what these guys are gonna be able to do for us, take a look at the traffic that's passing across the network and like with PBR, for example, a lot of times we might just be using something like an access control list to identify individual traffic flows. And we go, okay, if you see traffic from this source to this destination, pass it over there. WCCPs, basically a protocol developed by Cisco that's a bit more intelligent. It's got the capabilities to, to leverage load balancing, leverage fault tolerance, and be able to take, again, individual traffic flows, pass them over to the WSA, and this is gonna happen without the user's awareness. Um, the capability to talk to upstream devices and to, to kind of pass that traffic, uh, something that's gonna tie into other Cisco components very smoothly. You can find support for this on switches, routers. Uh, I've done this on the ASA. Um, so there's other components that can communicate and talk together to handle this handoff. Really pretty slick. Um, when we take a look at explicit forward, this is a bit different. This is where the endpoint would basically know that something's happening with the traffic. And it's been configured to do so. So if you've ever looked at the settings inside of your browser, you can modify the connectivity and you can tell the browser to use a proxy. Uh, for example, if you've ever wanted to look at web requests, or proxy is something where I can take my browser and I can say, go ahead and make all of your requests to 127.001 on port 8080. So if you've ever done that, that's, that's literally what we're talking about. You're telling the browser to use a different server, a different computer in the middle of the web request. Sometimes we'll do that ourselves to analyze what the request and what the responses look like and manipulate them and maybe make some automated loops and things. Um, that's kind of neat for, from a security research perspective. But when we look at this from the client perspective, we're telling that client browser to connect to the WSA. And then on behalf of the user, the WSA is going to go to the website that they're interested in, maybe cisco.com. Um, that's where the browser is configured. Now, alternatively, we can leverage uh, a file called a pack file that's for uh, configuring the proxy automatically. The prox those pack files uh, can be pretty easily deployed. Most uh, endpoints, most workstations are going to support the use of a pack. Uh, just depends whatever works right for the organization. Again, that, that client browser is just going to have a, a URL inside of it and it says retrieve this configuration file from this location. The configuration file is just gonna tell it how to communicate uh, with the WSA. So in that explicit deployment mode, the client is intentionally connecting to the web proxy. The client connects to the proxy server. The network device doesn't have to have anything to do with this. It's just routing packets as normal. So no additional configuration on switches and routers. This is just between the end user and the WSA. Um, those pack files that I mentioned, uh, this is a way, again, over here, 
under your land settings for Windows, and of course other operating systems support this as well, but we're gonna say we wanna use an automatic configuration script. What we're doing is here is putting the URL of where that pack file can be located. Uh, once we download the pack file, it's gonna tell us how to perform um, communication with that proxy server. Now there's another way that you can deploy this, which is kind of neat, uh, and that's just called automatic pack file uh, detection. So this is supported on some platforms if they support WPAD. If you haven't heard of WPAD, it's web proxy auto discovery, and this can actually be passed out leveraging DHCP. So if you think about some of the dangers, you know, just kind of uh, coming from this from, from a, a Black Hat's perspective, if somebody was targeting your organization and they wanted to be like a rogue access point or a rogue DHCP server, one of the things that they could potentially inject is a WPAD. So with this web proxy auto discovery, we could distribute proxy files and then people would think that we're the web server. Just different ways to achieve man in the metal. So while you're going through thinking about these things for uh, defense, you could also think about how somebody may use it for offense. Uh, the transparent deployment mode, this is pretty neat. If you, um, if you just enjoy working with packets and creating rules and pushing them around, you know, in the transparent mode, the network device is responsible for redirecting web traffic. This is neat because people might reinstall their operating system, they might change browsers, uh, they might bring other devices to work. So all of those devices, regardless of what they're doing, just pass regular old traffic. And then when we see that traffic, port 80 or maybe port 443, we'll say, oh, well, these traffic flows need to be punted over the WSA. And then, of course, we'll have our rules configured on the WSA for how to regulate these traffic flows. So looking at the capabilities here for the transparent redirect, uh, WCCP, I mentioned earlier, it's going to be available on switches, routers, and firewalls. And it's an intelligent mechanism for those devices to talk to a proxy and say, okay, hey, here comes some traffic. This is what we're doing with it. We can communicate data about load. Policy-based routing, this is something that I enjoy using, but not only is it resource intensive, it tends to be built based on static policies, so it's not as intelligent. Um, the layer four through seven redirect, this is giving the ability to tell a switch to pass certain traffic flows to the WSA, but instead of just looking at IP addresses and port numbers, we can look at content such as like a cookie header, a URL, or an SSL session ID. Again, this also supports load balancing and failover. So web cache content control, I'm sorry, web cache control protocol, I wanna keep throwing content in there, uh, is a content routing protocol that transparently redirects traffic flow in real time from a network device, so again, intermediate, not from the client, without the user's awareness. Again, the cool thing there, no uh, user configuration required. Uh, it's gonna survive reinstallation of operating systems and strange browsers and things like this. Um, some of the built-in features, as mentioned, load balancing, scalability, uh, and fault tolerance. I mean, who doesn't want those things? When we take a look at L4TM, again, layer four traffic monitor, this is a service uh, that's gonna be running on the WSA that provides passive protection against suspicious TCP and EDP sessions. When we look at leveraging L4TM in this configuration, what's actually happening here is the traffic is being redirected to the WSA. Only a copy from the original session is gonna be received, and this gives us limited protection. Why is that? Well, in order to get traffic into the WSA, we've got to statically configure it. Um, if we're not pushing it to the WSA, it's never gonna get a chance to get there. So here comes our packet. As the packet comes into the switch, a copy of the traffic goes to L4TM. Unfortunately, the rest of it just keeps going on by. We may not know anything. Notice that the response doesn't necessarily have to come back through us. So in order to tear this down, we don't have the same level of control like with man in the middle. So what we can do is try to tear a session down using TCP resets or generating ICMP host and reachables. Um, this is kind of what we saw in classic scenarios with intrusion detection, where it was kind of sitting there over there on the sidelines. Um, there are scenarios where this would be appropriate. Um, I know a lot of times customers are a little bit hesitant about point, deploying new security technologies. They want to see how they're going to behave or how they're going to react before they put them in line. It's a great argument for it. Um, sometimes people are against additional points of failure. 
Um, again, this gives you the additional uh, visibility without necessarily forcing all traffic to go through it. So the WSA supports high availability, uh, running both in transparent and explicit modes. 